For over a decade, one question has haunted the construction world. Will Saudi Arabia actually build a kilometer tall skyscraper? Right now, in the desert outside Jeddah, concrete is being poured, steel is rising, and after years of false starts, the answer might finally be yes. The Jeddah Tower, once called Kingdom Tower, is back from the dead, climbing toward a height that seemed impossible just a generation ago. But here's what nobody's talking about. This isn't just about bragging rights anymore. With Dubai racing to complete Creek Tower and Kuwait planning its own mega structure, we're witnessing something bigger, a high altitude arms race that could reshape how we think about cities, engineering, and the limits of human ambition. Let's address the elephant in the room first. Yes, this project was essentially dead for five years. In 2018, with the tower barely one third complete, everything stopped. The official reason? Contractor issues. The real story was far more complex, a corruption crackdown that saw key backers detained, including Prince Al-Walid bin Talal himself, the project's primary investor. Frozen at 63 floors, the concrete skeleton stood in the desert like a monument to overambition. But something changed in 2023. The Saudi Bin Laden Group, the construction giant behind the project, quietly began planning a resumption. No fanfare, no press releases, just groundwork for workers to return. By October 2024, they'd signed new contracts worth 7.2 billion Saudi reals, that's about $1.9 billion, to restart construction, with actual pouring resuming in January 2025. Here's where it gets interesting. The resumption wasn't driven by pride or competition. It was pure economics. Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 desperately needs Jeddah to become more than just a gateway to Mecca. The Jeddah economic city, where the tower sits, represents a $20 billion bet on transforming the Red Sea coast into a business hub rivaling Dubai. Think about the timing. Oil prices are volatile. The Saudi economy needs diversification. And nothing says open for business quite like the world's tallest building. But can they actually pull it off this time? The construction site tells its own story. Recent October 2025 drone footage shows something remarkable. The tower has surged past 75 floors, approaching 80, with the core climbing steadily at a pace of one floor every three to four days. That distinctive three-petal design, engineered to reduce wind loads, is taking shape. Workers are installing the exterior cladding system, those triangular panels that will eventually cover 500,000 square meters of surface area. But here's a detail most reports miss. They're not just building up anymore. The foundation work continues. Why? Because this tower's foundation is unlike anything ever attempted. We're talking about 270 piles, each 1.5 to 1.8 meters in diameter, driven 110 meters deep into the ground. That's deeper than a 30-story building is tall. Some of these piles can carry 3,000 tons each, the weight of about 2,000 cars. Let me paint you a picture of what it takes to build a kilometer into the sky. First, forget everything you know about normal construction. At this height, you're not just fighting gravity, you're fighting physics itself. The wind at 1,000 meters can exceed 200 kilometers per hour. The temperature difference between the base and top can be 10 degrees Celsius. The tower will sway up to two meters at the top. That's a full room width, and that's by design. Adrian Smith, the architect behind both the Burj Khalifa and Jeddah Tower, didn't just make this building tall, he made it smart. That Y-shaped footprint? It's not aesthetic, it's aerodynamic. As wind hits the building, it breaks apart rather than creating vortexes that could tear the structure apart. The tower actually confuses the wind, preventing it from organizing into destructive patterns. But the real innovation is invisible, the concrete. This isn't your typical concrete mix. We're talking about a special high strength blend that includes pozzolans like silica fume, designed to withstand the corrosive Red Sea air while maintaining strength at unprecedented heights. The concrete has to be pumped, get this, over 600 meters vertically. That requires pressures that would burst normal pipes. Here's something that keeps engineers up at night, differential shortening. As concrete cures, it shrinks. In a normal building, this is negligible. In a kilometer tall tower, the core could shrink by up to 25 centimeters relative to the perimeter columns. If not properly managed, this would tear the building apart from the inside. The solution? A complex system of outrigger trusses and belt walls that allow the building to compress evenly as it ages. The elevator system alone deserves its own documentary. 59 elevators, with some double-deckers, will move people at 10 meters per second. But here's the challenge nobody talks about. Ear pressure. 
Rising 1,000 meters in 90 seconds is like ascending in an airplane. The elevators need pressurization systems similar to aircraft cabins. And then there's the Spire. Originally designed as a simple architectural crown, it's evolved into something far more complex. Housing communication equipment, aircraft warning lights, and maintenance facilities, it needs to withstand forces that would flatten a normal building. The top will experience accelerations during storms that would make most people seasick. Let's talk money, because that's where this story gets really interesting. The original cost? $1.2 billion. But Construction Insider suggests the real figure, with recent modifications, delays, and inflation, could approach $26 billion, a cautionary tale of ambition's escalating price tag. For context, that's enough to build 10 world-class hospitals or educate 100,000 students through university. So why do it? The answer lies in something economists call the trophy asset effect. The Burj Khalifa, despite costing $1.5 billion to build, transformed Dubai's economy. Property values within 500 meters of the tower increased by 150% in five years. Tourism to Dubai doubled. The building became synonymous with the city itself. Saudi Arabia is betting on the same transformation for Jeddah. The tower anchors the Jeddah Economic City, a $20 billion development covering 5.3 million square meters. We're talking about housing for 300,000 people, offices for multinational corporations, and Saudi Arabia's attempt to steal some of Dubai's thunder as the Middle East's business capital. But here's what the glossy brochures don't mention. The tower needs to be 30% pre-sold before completion. As of late 2025, sales data remains mysteriously unavailable and still under wraps. The luxury condo market in Saudi Arabia isn't Dubai's. Jeddah doesn't have the same international appeal yet. The tower will contain a Four Seasons hotel occupying floors 48 through 94. That's 200 rooms with views stretching to the Red Sea. Above that, 325 luxury apartments, including some duplexes with private elevators. The top floors, office space that will literally be the highest in the world, where executives can look down on clouds. But who's buying? The target market is fascinating. Saudi princes, yes, but also Asian billionaires looking for a foothold in the kingdom. And increasingly, tech entrepreneurs drawn to Saudi's massive investment in artificial intelligence and renewable energy. The building is as much about attracting this new money as it is about displaying the old. There's another economic angle nobody discusses, jobs. The construction alone employs 5,000 workers, mostly from South Asia. Once complete, the tower will need 2,000 people just for operations, security, maintenance, hospitality. In a country trying to reduce unemployment among its youth, that matters. While Saudi Arabia was struggling with corruption probes and contractor disputes, the rest of the world wasn't standing still. Dubai, not content with the Burj Khalifa's dominance, began work on Dubai Creek Tower. Originally designed to exceed 1,300 meters, 300 meters taller than Jeddah Tower, it was going to reclaim the crown before Saudi Arabia could claim it. But here's the twist. In 2024, they redesigned it to be shorter than the Burj Khalifa. Why? Officially, design optimization. Unofficially, perhaps the economics of super tall towers are finally catching up with ambition. As of 2025, construction remains paused post redesign. Meanwhile, Kuwait announced the Burj Mubarak Al Kabir, planned for 1,001 meters, just one meter taller than Jeddah Tower. Coincidence? Hardly. This is architectural one upmanship at its finest. Though still in planning stages, it shows how the race for height has become a regional obsession. But the real competition might come from an unexpected place, China. While Middle Eastern nations fight over meters, China has quietly built more 300 meter plus towers in the last decade than the rest of the world combined. They have the technology, the experience, and increasingly the economic motivation to build something truly unprecedented. Here's what makes Jeddah Tower different from its competitors. It's already under construction. While others plan and redesign, Saudi Arabia is pouring concrete. Every day of actual construction puts them further ahead in a race where starting is often the hardest part. Now, let's talk about what could still go wrong, because at this height, everything is a potential catastrophe. Water. At 1,000 meters, getting water to the top isn't just about pressure, it's about preventing the pipes from exploding on the way up. The solution involves multiple pumping stations, essentially creating buildings within the building, each pressurizing water for the next stage up. Fire. How do you evacuate 5,000 people from 1,000 meters up? 
you don't. Instead, the building has refuge floors every 25 stories, fireproof zones with their own air supplies where people can shelter while firefighters respond. But here's the uncomfortable truth. No fire department in the world has equipment that can reach above 100 meters. Above that, the building has to save itself. Then there's the maintenance nightmare nobody wants to discuss. Cleaning windows at 1,000 meters isn't just dangerous. It's nearly impossible in conventional ways. The building will use $5 million worth of custom-designed cleaning equipment that can operate in winds that would ground helicopters. But perhaps the biggest challenge is one you can't see, relevance. In a world increasingly working from home, do we need kilometer-tall office towers? In an era of climate consciousness, can you justify the carbon footprint of lifting people 1,000 meters into the air every day? So what are we really watching here? Is this humanity's next great achievement or our last great folly? Consider this. When the Eiffel Tower was built in 1889, critics called it a metal monstrosity. The Empire State Building, constructed during the Great Depression, was derided as the empty state building for years. Yet both became symbols not just of their cities, but of human ambition itself. The Jeddah Tower represents something similar for the 21st century, a bet that the future still belongs to those who dare to build it. It's Saudi Arabia announcing that it won't just pump oil, but will create landmarks. It's engineering pushing into territory where the only precedent is what you create yourself. Current projections put completion at 2028, though given the project's history, 2030 might be more realistic. That would make it a perfect symbol for Saudi's vision 2030, delivered right on time, a kilometer tall, impossible to ignore. But here's the question that haunts this project. What comes next? Once you've built a kilometre tool, where do you go? 1.5 kilometres? 2? At what point does ambition become absurdity? Maybe that's the wrong question. Maybe the right question is, what does it mean for our species that we can even ask it? That somewhere, right now, engineers are calculating if we could build taller. Architects are dreaming of touching space, and somewhere in a boardroom, someone is asking, but what if we went higher? The Jeddah Tower isn't just racing past the Burj Khalifa, it's racing toward a future where the only limits are the ones we accept. Whether that's inspiring or terrifying might depend on which floor you're standing on. One thing is certain, by the end of this decade, if you want to touch the sky, you'll need to go to Saudi Arabia to do it. The kingdom of oil is becoming the kingdom of clouds, and that changes everything. If this sky-high story left you inspired or a little dizzy, hit that like button if you're Team Jeddah Tower. Drop a comment below with your thoughts on the ultimate height limit and subscribe for more epic dives into engineering marvels and mega projects. Turn on notifications so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching. See you at the top.